Since Adobe bought Figma, a lot of people think that XD will be killed in a year from now and that Figma is the future. And as I'm learning more about Figma, I'm actually becoming more excited because there are so many things that are just better in Figma than in XD. So let's get into it. And before we begin, I want to tackle the biggest fear that I had when I started interacting with Figma, and that was that Figma is web-based. So I thought that if you don't have an internet connection, then you cannot work in the tool anymore, or your work is lost, but that's not the case at all. When you have your tab open, you can just continue working in Figma, even when your internet is down, and then when your internet is back up, it just syncs the changes you have made to the cloud. So with that out of the way, let's start with the 15 things that I think are simply better or easier in Figma. The first thing has to do with numbers. So what you do a lot of time in a design tool is that you change the number. So for example, you change the font size to uh, 42 instead of 36. And you have to click and then look at your keyboard and then type in a number. But in Figma, as you can see, it's a scrubber. So you can just click and drag on the number and change the number. So it's a small thing, but it makes a big difference. In Figma, the Google fonts are automatically loaded into the tool. And this is because it's a web-based tool, so they can just use Google fonts. But what happens a lot of time in XD is that you have missing fonts in your documents. And especially when you work with other people who have fonts on their computer, you open their file and then you don't have those fonts and you have to download them or ask for the files, which of course is not perfect. So if you just use the Google fonts, which a lot of people do, then they are already loaded in, which just makes your life a little bit nicer. Okay, this one is also nice. Let's say that you wanna make this text a little bit bigger. So we're gonna go from 42 to 52. Then the line height doesn't change. So, so if you make it even bigger, then the text will be cramped. And you have your line height over here and they have to calculate like my font size has increased 20. So what about the line height? Uh, is that also 20? Uh, does, does it look the same? I don't know. But in Figma, you can just use percentages for the line height. So this is perfect because you set it up once and then if you increase the font size, the percentages will stay the same. So the line height will also stay the same if you increase the font size. So with this feature, you don't have to worry about line height that much anymore. Comments are also super nice on Figma. So in XD, you don't really have a comment feature, but what happens a lot of times is that you are working together with another designer, right? Or uh, you maybe want to send this design to a developer and the developer asks for your XD file. And yes, I know you can make a prototype and then make a developer link and then they can place comments on that prototype, but that's a little bit more work because then you have to make the prototype and share that link. But in Figma, the comment feature is there always. Just click on C and you can add a comment. And what's great about this is that you can also reply to other people. If multiple people are working on the same project, you can resolve a comment and you can even make a selection and be like, hey, this section doesn't look that good. So it's not only points, it's also a selection. So in XD, when I work with somebody else, I just always used a Comic Sans and a red to make it really visible, like this is really ugly. So this cannot be part of the design. So it's a comment, right? <laughs> that, that's, that's what I did in my company, which is kind of stupid, of course. I mean, it works, but having a comment feature is just a lot better. A lot of times in a design, you are adjusting the space between objects. And in Figma, this is really easy to do. You don't have to make a group. You don't have to make a stack. You just select a few things and there they are. The features are there. You could just click and drag and it even works in a vertical way. So you don't have to make a group at all to do that, which keeps your layers panel clean. And you don't have to think about what feature you had to use in order to do that. Because in XD, you first had to make it a group and then you had to stack it. So this is also super simple but so much better this one is particularly interesting for xd users so in figma you can add multiple backgrounds to a layer so what i mean by this is for example you have a hero section like this with a background and you add an image on top of it and then if you want to add a dark layer or a gradient, you would have to create an extra layer in XD. But in Figma, you just add an extra fill. You turn that into a gradient or a radial gradient or whatever. And you add another one if you want to. And it's all within this one layer. 
This of course keeps your layers panel clean and you don't have to open your layer panel to find the layer you want to edit. In XD as you can see you always had to create an extra layer on top of it to add a simple gradient like this. This one is super small but also nice. Sometimes your design has the same background color as your canvas background and in Figma you can change the color of your canvas background to whatever you like. So in the evening you can even change it to black if you want to, which of course is easier on the eyes, but it's especially useful when it's the same color so you can actually see what you're designing. In Figma, you can add objects to a group by just dragging and dropping it. They don't call it a group in Figma because you have to use a frame to do this, which is used for auto layout, which I will explain in another video. But in XD, you had a stack of elements and you had to get inside of the group and then cut the thing you wanted to get in there and then paste it and then put it in position. But in Figma, when it's a frame, you just drop a button into it and boom, it's there. You don't have to open a group, anything. It just understands that there is a frame or group in there and it just drops it in. That is pretty genius. Another frustration that I had with XD is that when I was working with another designer and they had a newer version of Adobe XD and I opened their file, it was a pop-up saying like, hey, you need to update your software, otherwise you can't open this file. And that sometimes like takes like 10 minutes because it has to download like a, a gigabyte of, uh, for the new software. It was, wasn't just a nice experience, but in Figma, everything is in the cloud, meaning that there's no software updates. You always have the newest software, so you never have that problem again. This one also has to do with stacking. So in XD, if you wanted to change the order of uh, tiles, for example, you had to create a group and then select the stack feature, and then you could switch the order. But in Figma, that is super easy as well. You just select a few boxes and then you can already change the order. You can do this in a horizontal or a vertical orientation. So you don't have to create a group or a stack at all. It just works straight away. And this of course saves you time with aligning it perfectly to the grid because it's kind of magnetic. Another thing is that in Figma you have stroke direction and this is interesting uh, to create buttons like this for example where you have a stroke on the left and on the bottom creating this cool looking 3D button. In XD you simply didn't have this option. Uh, this can also be useful for tiles and yes of course in XD you could create another shape but here it's just all within that right panel. It's just really easy to do which I prefer. Restoring older files in Figma is also easier and you had this option uh, in XD but it was not visual and you could not preview it. So let's say that you're not happy with the things you did yesterday and you want to go back another day. Well you can do that, you can just preview what you've done and then decide if you want to go back to it the same way as Google Docs does that. In XD you don't get these previews and you just have to be lucky which of course is not as nice as first looking what it was and then clicking on restore. Since Figma is in the cloud, it automatically auto saves your work, uh, like in Google Docs, which is great. Uh, but in XD, that's not the case. And yes, I know when you work in Creative Cloud, there is an auto save option, but I always saved my project in the Dropbox. And Adobe XD sees the Dropbox as a local file, uh, even though Dropbox is also a cloud. So then you have to remember to click on a, a comment S or just file and then save. And of course, sometimes you forget it and then your uh, program crashes. I mean, you've all been there probably with other tools of Adobe like Premiere, Photoshop, uh, that it crashes and you lose your work. That's not, that's not the case with Figma because it's all in the cloud. I think that's awesome as well. When you create a shape in Adobe XD, it always added a border to the shape. And now that I've seen how Figma has done it, I'm like, why did Adobe XD add that border? I always unchecked it, but most of the shapes you create, you don't use the border. So why is it default? So this is also something super small, uh, which makes the experience just nicer because you create uh, shapes, rectangles, a lot of times in your design. So in XD, if you had a document like this, you can of course save all of your colors in the asset panel over here. And then when you change the color over here, it changes in your whole document. But the thing is, when you click over here, you change the color over here. And yes, I know you can also click over here, but a lot of times you also change your color over here. But here your asset colors are not visible. Like why not? 
because sometimes you are working in the layers panel and then you don't see that option over here. So why are the asset colors not over here as well? And this is also the case in Figma. So you don't always have to open your asset panel. You can just open your layers over here. And if you want to select a color, your asset colors are on the right in Figma which is how it should be. And this is the same for fonts, by the way, they're also all on the right side, which just makes it a lot easier because you don't have to constantly switch between layers and assets all the time. Don't you agree that Figma has done a pretty great job at improving the small things, not the big features, but the small things that make the experience of working in a tool like this better. It's so much better than what we had before in Photoshop 10 years ago because back then that was the only tool to create uh, websites in. And yes, you could also use Illustrator or InDesign. Some people use that, but in design school, they teach Photoshop. So Adobe XD was the next step. And now Figma is a step after that, in my opinion. So again, if you wanna know why I'm switching to Figma, not just because of these features, but also because I think Adobe will kill XD eventually. I've explained all of that in my other video, which you can watch via the link in the description below. I've hope that I made some XD users excited for Figma because I am going to create a lot more videos on Figma. That is just what I'm going to do the upcoming year. So if you want to have more content on Figma, then make sure you subscribe to Living With Pixels. And if you never want to miss a video, then also click on the bell so you will get a notification when I upload a new video. And since I'm still learning in Figma, share some things that you think are better about Figma compared to XD in the comments below because I want to learn as well. And then hopefully I will see you in the next video on Living With Pixels. Thank you.